Hello to you there. Let's continue our roll call of idiots, the science of idiotism. Gurdjieff's list included 21 categories of idiot. We are now looking at idiot number 10, which is enlightened idiot. And this category is widely regarded as the most unhappy of all the idiots. And this is Gurdjieff speaking himself. I pity enlightened idiot. More unhappy person does not exist. The enlightened idiot, the enlightened idiot has struggled and climbed and finally reached the stage when he knows everything. He knows exactly what he must do, but he cannot do it. It may not even be his own fault. Uh, it may be some defect in his hereditary, grandfather or grandmother. Perhaps his grandmother was a, was a prostitute. No one can help him. Not even God. Enlightened idiot number 10. I wonder what idiot I am. Uh, could be, uh, I think it's number 14, born idiot. What idiot are you? And that is the question. That really is the question. Someone left me a comment the other day, as people do, and they said, this is quite incredible. We don't really know a great deal about the roll call of idiots and the importance that he played in Gurdjieff's teaching. And it does play a great big importance. One would be an idiot uh, to think otherwise. Um, and sometimes each person, their level of idiocy was spoken of for over half an hour before the meal began. So this would be like a prelude into a very sumptuous, very, very beautiful Gurdjieffian feast. Uh, but know your idiot before you know anything. Uh, because there is infinite wisdom in knowing what level of idiot one is actually actually at. And there can be no bigger idiot than those who do not realize uh, what number of idiot they are. In this knowledge is, is divine wisdom. The roll call of idiots, 1 to 21. And the supreme idiot, as I said in, said in a little short that I made the other day, the supreme idiot, number 21, is Mr. God. And the numbers up to that, 18, 19, 20, are figures in a divine hierarchy leading up to supreme idiot 21, Mr. God. But today we've been looking at the enlightened idiot, which is referred to as the most unhappy of all the idiots. And as Gurdjieff, this was Gurdjieff's speech I've just read to you, uh, says, uh, cannot be helped, and not even by God. And then Gurdjieff goes on to say, uh, perhaps if enlightened idiot gives me enough money, then I help him. But got to be enough money, and I help enlightened idiot. Let me tell you something, guys and gals, uh, for certain. I know this. In Gurdjieff's teaching and himself, what he taught is something inexplicably and miraculously divine. But it's kept under lock and key for many, many reasons. And an awareness of that divinity and that magic within the teaching, that it's real, lifts you up onto another level. Beelzebub's tales may be difficult, it's meant to be, and you have to struggle and wrestle with it. And people have said to me, if I tell them what it means, uh, it's not really doing them any good, that you need to find for yourself. And as Annie Lou Staveley, uh, a lady who worked with Gurdjieff for over 10 years in, uh, in Paris, uh, she wrote a, an essay about Beelzebub's tales, a commentary, and she said, if anyone else tells you what this means, uh, it's a completely wasted effort. You need to find for yourself, because to quote her, when you dig deep and you wrestle, you actually, the knowledge you receive, the wisdom, the divinity, is first hand. It's not second hand. If someone tells you it's second hand, it's meaningless, it's rubbish, you need to dig deep for yourself and struggle and find out. 
And this Annie Lou Staverley goes on to say a little bit later in the essay, and it's a wonderful example, and I've never mentioned it before. In chapter 32 of Genesis, uh, Jacob wrestles with an angel, and it lasts for like a 24-hour period overnight, and J Jacob is literally tortured and torn apart, and he says to the person who he believes is a man, but is an angel that Jacob is wrestling with, chapter 32, Genesis, I will not let you go unless you bless me. This is what Jacob says to the angel. And he never lets go, and he wrestles all night and un un until morning time, and the angel blesses him. And it's the same with the fourth way work. I know that. It is now my journey over the last 30 years has gone far beyond belief into actually knowing for certain. Everything that happens in our lives, whether we deem it good or bad, is an event. It's been orchestrated. And, and Maurice Nichols says in the commentaries that you cannot change the event, but you can change your reaction to it. The event was created before you were. And by changing your reaction to the event, you change the future event. This is very, very complicated, detailed, intricate stuff, but it works and it's true. A series of events in which we must not see good or bad or opposites, but, but rise above them, to see them as events. And then we are catapulted to a much, much higher level of being Going back to my talk, I'll read what Gurdjieff said again, because I like him, I know that you do, about the enlightened idiot. Uh, when we know that this is tr true, we know in our essence, and everything changes. It's knowing, it's actually knowing. Uh, and someone has just left me a comment on my Gurdjieff and Prayer video, a person called Karen, something or other, Thank you so much if you're watching this. And the person says, there is no, it's not important to think about secrecy within the work. Uh, the work actually protects itself. And it does. Let us not forget that we are involved full on, full throttle, head first with the miraculous, in which all our mechanical perceptions and ideas are seen to be less than nothing in light of the miraculous and it's absolutely divine. Enlightened idiot. People speak of enlightenment. I don't. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a crock of shit as far as I'm concerned. It's meaningless. And Gurdjieff felt the same. Please don't talk to me about enlightenment. It's bullshit. And as I say, the, the most unhappy idiot is idiot number 10, the uh, enlightened idiot. I was going to make this as a short. It's obviously gone longer. So I'll read the passage again and then try and make it as a short. Gurdjieff speaking about idiot number 10 at one of the dinner parties in his Parisian apartment. I pity enlightened idiot. More unhappy person not exist. The enlightened idiot has struggled and climbed and finally reached the stage where he knows everything. He knows exactly what he must do, but he cannot do it. It may, it may not even be his own fault. It may be some defect in his hereditary, heredity, a grandfather or, or, or grandmother. Perhaps his grandmother was a prostitute. No one can help him, not even God. Enlightened idiot number 10. But as Gurdjieff went on to say, if you, if you have enough money, uh, possibly he, Gurdjieff, can help you and move you forward from being an enlightened idiot. The roll call of idiots. It doesn't get any better than this, does it? It doesn't get any better than this. I send you lots of love through this screen thing in front of me, and I thank you very much for watching and spending time on this, this stuff that I'm spouting incessantly since the year dot. Uh, it just flows through me. It's just like a, I'm like a, what is the word? A, 
a vessel uh, for this stuff that's flowing through me. And I want to share it with other people because I'll only be here for a few more years. Obviously, I'm 87. You, know, you, you can't live forever. So I will impart and share with magnanimity and grandiloquence and all the other noble attributes with people who are there to receive what this beautiful divine work has to offer. Lots of love to you, and it's all go, so let's go. Noel at the, whatever the name of the channel is, I don't want to identify with it. Lots of love to you. See you later now. Bye.